Salutations, everyone. Welcome back to Victoria 3. I'm Lord Foreman, and it is time for another guide. This time, we're going to be covering colonization. Um, how to do it, how to get it set up, and where the best places are to colonize, as well as what technology you need. So let's get started. First off, you need to research the technology colonization. Obviously, we're playing as Great Britain here, so we don't already need to research this because we have it already done. So colonization is needed. It unlocks the Colonial Affairs Institution, which then if you go to your policies and laws, you have to change your law. If you are on no colonial affairs, which most nations start, you have to change either to colonial resettlement or colonial exploitation. The biggest difference between these two laws, they have the same colonial growth generation. So growing doesn't make a difference how fast your colony grows. Instead, colonial resettlement increases migration attraction, how much populations migrate there. So if you want to develop your colonies and build up their population, this is the one to use. This other one, colonial exploitation, lowers the subs subsidence output in unincorporated states, as well as reduces starting wages. Basically, people working in those areas are paid less, and there's less output from subsidence farming. And then you have negative 25% tension decay, which basically means it's harder for you to lower your negative reputation for fighting wars with natives and stuff. Um, it applies to your other infamy as well, um, but it really, I'm sorry, tension, not infamy. Uh, it does apply a pretty substantial bonus. Basically, if it gets too high, the natives will probably revolt. This makes it harder. So basically this one, you're more 25% more likely to have a revolt, as well as you have a higher throughput, um, which is very nice. This is actually the better law, in all honesty, unless you're trying to build population like someone like South Africa, Australia, or someone on those areas who has a low population and wants migration, this colonial exploitation that actually causes native revolts and uprisings is good because you can usually win the defensive war and then just seize all the land from that native country in a single war. So if we were to look down here at the start, the British have a colony in British Gambia. Um, they are slowly expanding into Kabul's land. At some point, their tension with us might get too high at which point they may revolt, and then we win the war, and considering they have actually a decent amount of troops, our troops are better, we'll crush them, then we'll annex all their land in a single war. That's how, if you watch nations colonize, all of a sudden they just massively explode. Basically, they trigger a native uprising or native revolt, and then they crush it. So, now that you have passed your colonial resettlement law, you will have unlocked this institution, Colonial Affairs. You'll start at level one to go up to level two requires a higher bureaucracy cost. The bureaucracy cost is based off your population. So a large nation like, uh, say, the Qing um, would have a much higher cost than, say, Belgium. On the other hand, this colonial growth generation is a little bit less straightforward than it sounds. It sounds like you'll get 0.2 colonial growth generation. The reality is it's not that simple. So if we click over here and we look at growing the colony. Now, the progress has increased 33% due to colonial growth generated by Great Britain of 3.36. If you hover over it, it will actually tell you it generates 0.2 per 1 million people. Well, we have 26 million, which is why this growth rate is so high. On the other hand, we have a problem with malaria in our lands. Now. There are two major modifiers that hinder colonization, especially in Africa. You've got basically malaria, and then if we look elsewhere, you will have... Oh, let's go down here. I know there's some down here. You will have severe malaria, which hinders the growth even more, as well as increases uh, mortality of the pops in the area, unless they're the native culture. Now... These two problems with malaria can be mostly controlled by technology. So while colonization unlocked the first level, the next level here, quinine, requires you to reach pharmaceuticals, then you can research it. It removes the effect of malaria from your own colonies in states, as well as allow you to start establishing colonies in areas with severe malaria. Be aware, 
that you will still suffer the severe malaria penalty and it will cripple your growth. And I'm not entirely sure if it's a bug or not, but sometimes the malaria penalty from owned colonies and states doesn't go away from me. Sometimes it does. Um, I'm not entirely sure of the logic behind all of those details. If someone figures it out, by all means, put it in the comments. Suffice to say, once you research this, your colonies are going to start growing faster. Your next tech is Civilizing Mission. This one basically does nothing except give you a higher level of colonization institution. Um, so basically, you're going to gain a 0.1 growth rate. And then finally down here, and this is 27 years of research, if we were to go just start on it, so obviously ahead of time here, this removes the effect of severe malaria from your own colonies and states. Now, there is still areas where it's going to grow very, very slow. Um, and then, then at some point, there'll be areas it grows faster. But suffice to say, this severe malaria penalty won't be as big of a hindrance once someone, probably Great Britain or France, researches malaria prevention, could be the US, all of a sudden, the scramble for Africa will start for that nation, and you will very rapidly start colonizing your way through Africa. So, in the meantime, let's talk about colonization. For most nations, you want to run one or maybe two colonies. Great Britain, on the other hand, can run multiple colonies. So, how do we run a colony? Well, we click on the diplomatic lens, we go to an area that's green, and we click declare an interest. Now, Great Britain has a lot of interests already, being the number one great power. However, it does not have any in Niger or the Congo. So if we try to establish a colony here, it will tell us, well, we must have an interest in the Congo to colonize here, or quinine, or if we go all the way down here, um, well, actually, it still says quinine, but it would have a huge penalty. So if we declare an interest in these areas, and why not? Great Britain has interests to spare. Um, you can just declare all Africa your interest, basically. Then we can establish colonies. Now, there are a couple areas in Africa that are better than others, and there's some elsewhere in the world. Now, up here, you can pick this Mauritania area or Senegal area, but the big prize to start is West Sahara. This has a very low colonization penalty because does not have malaria, meaning as Great Britain, you will colonize this extremely quickly. Hopefully, then you can start expanding outwards. While most nations want to take one colony, Great Britain is in the position where taking multiple colonies early on is fine because you have the population to support them. So other areas to snag early on, if you can, is down here, Buenos Aires, Patagonia, and Oracania. I don't know what the pronunciations. These are going to be colonized by Argentina or Chile. However, you can outpace them and gain a good control of the land yourself, as long as you don't establish too many colonies. Now, if we look at the Gambia here, it was like 100-something days. It's now 1,000-plus days. That is because, as we establish colonies, it's now split the growth rate between your colonies. So even, you are, even though you are Great Britain, establishing tons of colonies will slow you down enough that someone like France, who's only doing like one or two colonies, will rapidly outpace you. So other areas to snag early on. You can, if you want, to colonize the rest of Australia and New Zealand. And I do recommend you at least get Australia done. But it's not the fat most necessary thing to start with. Usually the AI leaves it alone, but it can be worth throwing at least one down here because as Great Britain, you have the ability to federate Australia, Canada, and the British Raj once they're colonized. Now, what would be really nice, Great Britain, and you can't do it, is to finish off colonizing up here for the Hudson Bay, who will do it extraordinarily slowly. But the other areas here, down here, while you can establish colonies here, France has already started their colonies here. And if you start putting more colonies down here, this was 60 days, now it's 180. You'll get to the point where they will outpace you and seize most of the land, even though you might have one state, sort of little colony port, basically. So you got to keep an eye on that. The reality is establishing these many is too much. You could actually cancel the Gambia 
because of how slow the growth rate is to free up growth rate elsewhere. And honestly, I might recommend that. Even though the Gambia is not bad land, it's just not profitable really for you to colonize it. You're much better off colonizing the faster ones and coming back later once you either increase your institution or you get better technology. Now, let's talk about actual good regions in Africa if you're not Great Britain, for example. Because Great Britain is probably the only one who's going to make a rush for down here outside of Argentina or Chile. Um, you could do it as someone else. So the prize up here, this West Sahara area, this area right down here, South Cameroon, is a, another area you can colonize pretty quickly, even though it does have malaria. The technology quinine will help you reduce that growth rate. But over here is a great prize for anyone who can get here quickly. Kenya. The reason Kenya is key, Kenya is key, uh, is because this, if you can get far enough out to here, it gives you access to all this land. Normally, France colonizes here and then races inland and takes all this land. If for some reason is Great Britain or another nation, you can prevent it. If you're France, it's a great area. Be aware, of course, there is a malaria penalty. So if you are a colonizer, it is worth racing pharmaceuticals and quinine to get your growth rate going. Okay, that sounds simple. Now, what are the benefits of colonization for those of you who are curious? Well, the benefits of colonization is access to resources and in the long run, more population. And if you colonize Central Africa, access to rubber. Elsewhere, you might find oil or you may gain access to stuff like opium, which is a very valuable resource in this game. So there is a couple other things to note that this is an unincorporated state. So if you hover over here, it does not cost any bureaucracy to maintain, but you don't collect any taxes and you have no institution benefits there outside of the colonization one. You also have a lower penalty to infrastructure and conscriptable battalions. Once it's fully colonized, you can incorporate it, at which point it becomes part of your empire, pays taxes, and all of that. So what do you use colonies for? Don't build urban buildings in colonies. It is outside of maybe one or two, like if you're having trouble educating the populace, throwing down a university might not be a bad thing. But by and large, taxes aren't paid, so wages and stuff, not too beneficial here. What you want to use colonies for is the resources because those will be produced and sold in your market and someone like great britain there's a huge demand for your resources as the game progresses down here these areas in particular they have undiscovered discoverable resources here and there's a chance they get discovered every day certain colonies and areas have them others don't for example up here is not a discoverable resource. Basically, that means rubber or oil. And if you're in Central Africa, it's rubber. This area right through here is some of the most valuable colonial land in the game because it supplies a ton of rubber. If you're going to be a colonizer, it is worth getting the South Cameroon area just for the rubber colonies. You can get like 34 or 35 rubber plantations, which will be the vast majority of the game supply of rubber because the AIs kind of suck at building up uh, their resources. Also, all the way through here, they've got all your standard resources, um, wood, iron mines. In fact, some of these, oops, some of these areas through here are part of the Congolese rainforest and on the Congo River, which first off gives you a nice infrastructure, but also gives you a bonus to hardwood production, meaning this land here is very valuable for um, lumber camps and stuff. But you go for the rubber, you stay for the wood. Elsewhere in the world, some of these areas out here have discoverable resources. There is a chance that you find gold in some of these areas, but it's very rare. Um, but if it does happen, it's very valuable. Down here, this area through here, if you can get into it, um, there are gold fields up in this area which can be valuable if you can colonize there. Be aware that this area here does have severe malaria and it will take you time to get there. So to summarize, early prizes, if you can snag it, Argentina and the area, 
In this case, it's Great Britain. It's more valuable for us to focus elsewhere, so we're actually going to abandon these colonies. But uh, other nations, this area is a nice early prize, especially if you don't have malaria prevention technology and want some access to resources. Getting Mauritania here, south uh, Western Sahara, starting in South Cameroon, and starting in Kenya are all particularly valuable. For the British, it's worth going out of your way, finishing off Western Australia to help with the Confederation, and then move to New Zealand. If, for example, you're playing Russia, you can start colonizing your way into Japan and then conquer them. If you're France, getting Kenya and the other areas, and most of the European colonists play the same. If you're the US, you colonize all the Native American nations, and then you can colonize elsewhere if you want. They also, all these islands out here, it's not easy to see, but they all count as colonial areas as well. In fact, if you go to Establish Colony, it will give you a nice summary of everywhere you can colonize. The downside of these is they're not particularly valuable. The only thing they really bring in is a couple plantations. And early on, you have access to whaling stations, which does give you a little bit of oil if you don't have oil in your homelands. And that's pretty much it for the colonizing stuff. If you're a colonizer, the great thing about it is it doesn't cost you that much. Just some bureaucracy and a couple tax um, and gives you access to more resources. Small countries like the Netherlands, Belgium, Denmark, basically any of those countries, Portugal, Spain has problems getting to colonizing. The, those other countries, though, you almost have to colonize due to a shortage of natural resources in your homeland. The poor Dutch, in particular, don't have access to iron mines in their homeland, which is absolutely crippling, meaning they need to colonize an area with iron mines. Um, and that can be a little bit difficult to find, especially because there's no like overview of where resources are in the world at the moment. I do hope they add that later on. But you can go down here, and some of these areas here, I thought one of them had iron. Oh, I guess I'm crazy. There are iron mines for the taking if you can find them, and it's worth snagging for those nations. Anyway, best of luck with colonizing. I know it wasn't the most totally in-depth guide, but hopefully it un helps you understand some of the stuff around it. Be prepared for a lot of native uprisings. It might be worth in one of your colonies, throwing down like five barracks or something, making a new uh, headquarters there and just using those troops. Five troops will smash basically every native nation in the game and give you access to a huge amount of land. Just be aware that if we started a colony here, it will only colonize this area and then sometimes this area, meaning you have to declare new interests and start new colonies as you expand inland to gain access to these states. Also, you can only colonize, and I should point this out, into these unincorporated, decentralized powers. Even a unrecognized power like the Zulu prevent you from colonizing there. So if you want to conquer these lands up here, anyone that's filled in with color, you actually have to declare war and conquer them. Uh, it's really easy to conquer them as a European power. Just be aware other nations that are your rivals, England and France are particular culprits, they might join to defend the natives, and a single colony in Africa can turn into World War I very quickly. A good policy for Great Britain to avoid that, end your rivalry with France, it'll just make it that much easier. And anyway, that's the guide to colonization. Hopefully it helps you understand the complexities behind it. If anyone knows the in-depth logic of where malaria gets removed from, let us know. But it says it will get removed from all states, doesn't always get removed from the states, although it seems to be removed on new colonies, not necessarily old ones. I don't know. I think it's a bug. Anyway, thank you guys all for watching. Hopefully it helped you. Like, comment, subscribe if it does, and I will see you all in another video. Bye for now.